Hey everyone, Cody here. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little, I don't know if you can see me, we're gonna be doing something a little different. So we're going to be doing a Pollock style painting. Ooh, that's not different, right? However, the twist is that for the, the paint on the canvas itself, we're gonna be using acrylic, not gloss enamel. So we're gonna see kind of how that, that turns out. Uh, also, we're going to be doing it on a linen canvas. So uh, linen tends to be a little more expensive than cotton um, for canvas. However, linen is what Pollock used. And I was at Michael's earlier today and they actually had these on clearance. I'm assuming that people don't tend to buy linen, at least not from like craft stores because craft stores are more for hobbyists as opposed to professionals. Um, so I don't think that the linen sells very well. So it was actually on clearance. Uh, so this was like $2 and something cents. Um, for Yes, for a small one. But that's that's my point, is that normally they're like $12, $13 for one. Um, so anyway, we're going to be using this. I got another one, so I'll be doing another video soon. But on that one, we'll actually do the Pollock style with the gloss enamel, which is the type of paint he used. So we'll be using linen canvas and gloss enamel, but today we will be doing uh, linen canvas, which I have never used ever. So this is the first time, uh, this is actually the first time I've ever used linen canvas. So we're gonna see how that reacts. It's also kind of the, it's really the first time I've ever done a Pollock style painting with uh, acrylic as well. So it's it's kind of a twofold uh, new thing for me uh, to do a Pollock style painting with acrylic and to use linen. So we're going to be doing that today. So first off, uh, I had to pick, I picked some colors and uh, we're, what we're going to use is turquoise, black and white. Um, Pollock tended to use a lot of that. He used black and white pretty much on all of his Pollock style paintings. <laughs> Sorry, his, uh, his drip paintings. He used black and white pretty much all the time, but he also tended to use like turquoise and purple as well. Um, so maybe Maybe we'll do a little purple. No, I don't have enough. So we'll just we'll just stick with the three colors. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to kind of measure it out. So we're gonna do that sounds kind of weird. Uh, but we're gonna put quite a bit of paint in here. And we're going to we'll we'll just leave it at that, because I actually don't know how much I'm gonna need. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fill all three of these cups with paint. That was more black than it was turquoise. So. But I'll probably end up using more black than turquoise anyway, so it's probably not that big a deal. I've got a couple here that I should probably put the lids on, and I'll probably do that afterwards. Um, so we'll go ahead and put some white in there. All right, so we've got our black, we've got our white, we've got our turquoise. We'll go ahead and we may as well just kind of fill it up. All right. So we've got the three colors. So Pollock, uh, if you didn't know, Pollock tended to uh, <clears throat> dilute his paints because that's how he was able to kind of get those drip patterns. Um, so we're gonna dilute these paints, but we're also going to get some paint sticks out because we'll be using the paint sticks as our uh, applicators for the paint itself. So for the for the water, I don't actually know how much water we're gonna need. So I'm gonna fill it probably to that line right there. Um, I know what the consistency should look like, so I'll kind of know it when I see it. So I add a little more water on that one. I'll add a little water there. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold, go ahead and mix these up. So when we're mixing them up, essentially the consistency that we're looking for I mean, really, if you're doing your own Pollock style painting, you can do any consistency you want, right? But the consistency I'm looking for and generally the consistency I try to reach when I'm making these types of paintings is not super like watery like soup, um, but runny. So that when you, if you hold up like your, if you use like a paint stick to, to add, like to throw the paint or if you use a, um, you know, the back of a paintbrush or a stick, whatever you use to make this type of painting, when you hold it up, it, it does that 
right there. Um, this is actually a little too thick. So when you, well, what I look for when I do this is that when I hold it up, it does that right there where you see how it was like a continuous line and then it started kind of glopping at the end. So that, that little glop that it's doing where it runs smoothly and then it stops and it starts coming off in chunks, that means it's a little too thick. So we're gonna add a little bit. So I, I mean, the amount is not really measured. Um, I guess I could measure it, but it just, then you're just using more and more tools. Like then you're just making it more methodical. Um, and I don't believe that that's how Pollock painted. I'm pretty sure he didn't sit there and measure all of his colors. He probably just had an idea that he was looking for, and that is much better. So, we've got that, and now we'll move on to the black. What are you doing, Ben? Hello? Okay. Somebody came in the garage and left. All right. So we'll mix up our black here. Um, let's see if it's got the same consistency. It's probably, yeah, it's too thick. That was, uh, that was a little chunky. So now there's a couple of reasons why the, this black is so thick. Uh, first, it has to do with the coloring. So in paint, and I see this more so with the gloss enamel, that certain colors seem to be thicker than others. And I think it has to do with like the pigments. So if they have to use more pigment, then like it's it's thicker or something. I don't know. I've just noticed that some paints seem to be thicker than others. Um, maybe that's not the case necessarily with, um, with acrylic, but it is the case with the gloss enamel. So, I think we're pretty good there. Uh, kind of glopping up. Let's see if it's just not mixed enough. Yeah, it needs a little, just a tiny bit more. So we're just gonna add a tiny bit more. Another thing is the uh, is obviously the brand or the level of paint. So like, okay, so this is uh, Liqui Liquitex Basics. A lot of people don't consider Liquitex Basics like a professional grade paint, although I know professional paint painters that use Liquitex because they say that the paint is just fine. Um, but like, all right, this other paint, this turquoise, this was Artist Loft. So like Artist Loft is, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Michael's brand. Um, and Artist Loft is, you know, isn't as high quality. Um, however, there's two levels of paint that they sell. So even though there's, it's acrylic paint, it's not all the same, right? There's artist grade and then there's professional grade. And that's actually the case with a lot of products. So not just paint, but like canvas or paper or whatever. So you kind of have to look for, you have to look at that, like the, the grade on it. And so like this was, I think a grade one, well, there's a grade two that's a higher quality, but it's all, it's still, you know, artist loft. So it's the same brand, but it's a different grade of paint. So there's like, you know, professional grade things and then there's uh, student grade things. So uh, I don't really know where Liquitex kind of falls in on that. I'm assuming that it's probably closer to a student grade paint because I think that Liquitex is owned by Golden. I'm not 100% sure, um, but I think they are. And if that's the case, Golden's paint is, is a lot higher quality. So, you know, it's... You can tell really by the price. So the, the price does, you know, honestly give it away. Um, like if you're paying more for the paint, then it probably is higher quality. And you can make like decent paintings with, like for example, you could make the same painting with Liquitex and Golden. And the Liquitex paint like will look good. The painting will probably look good, but it's not, it's not gonna have the same kind of like pop to it or vibrancy or color fastness, which means, that the color's gonna, you know, dissipate over time. So like a higher grade paint probably has less um, fillers in it. And so it's going to be more vibrant, uh, not just up front, but overall, like in, in the long run. All right, so I think we're pretty good here. Let me just scrape this, put that in there. 
and I think that's pretty good. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get to the actual fun part, the painting. So we're going to start with black. I'm going to go ahead and move my colors over here so they don't get paint in them. Um, so I don't mix the colors. So we'll just move, I'll move this over here, off screen. All right, and move some of this junk out of the way just because I plan on getting paint on it. All right, so what's that? All right, so here we go. Uh, this is acrylic paint on linen canvas. Again, this, both of these are first for me, so. Now, since I'm limited on space, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this bad boy. And now we are getting some, some large splatter. Um, I kind of want to minimize some of that. So I'm going to use a smaller stick, but I'm also going to go ahead and I hate to thin it out too much. Um, so let's see what kind of results this gives us. So we've got quite a bit of black going on here. Kind of want to get some on there. Kind of like these thin lines going through here. All right, so I think we're good on the black for now. Um, we may add more later once we kind of see how the layers develop. All right, so here's the kind of the crux that we're at. Um, if I don't dry these layers, when I apply the next one, it's just going to mix them. It's not gonna give us like clear layer definition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and run a heat, um, heat gun over the paint to dry it. I may hyperlapse it so you don't have to sit there and listen to it the whole time, um, but that's what I'm gonna do now. All right, so I'm hoping that that's thick enough that it will, if I start putting more paint on there, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't bleed together. Um, what I'm gonna do is I don't like how thick these lines are coming out. 
and they're not really like splashing. So I'm gonna add a little more water to the white to make it thinner than what I initially thought we needed um, to really kind of give it the uh, a little bit more movement. So I assume that it's probably still pretty wet, but it does look like it's got a little bit of skin on it from the heat gun, so it's perfect. So we'll go ahead and yeah, there we go. So now we're getting kind of the the volume that I was looking for with the drips. get this angle as well. Now we're starting to lose the black. There's a lot of white on there. I don't know if I want to add the turquoise because I kind of like just the black and white uh, splash. I'm kind of like going back and forth on it. I really like the look of the, the raw linen with the black and the white by itself. Um, so I don't think after, after making the turquoise, I don't think I'm going to add it actually. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead and dry this a little bit and then add more black and kind of see how that looks. So we've got that. Um, let me go ahead and add a little bit more black. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin this down just a little bit. Just to give it... Ooh, oh, almost spilled the water on there.
All right, I think while it's wet, I will add a little bit more white just to kind of balance it out. And I think we'll be done, actually. All right, so I like it. It's a little unbalanced over here. Um, there's a lot of raw linen over here, so I'm just gonna try to balance it out a little bit with some well-placed drops. And I apologize if I'm not really saying much, I'm just focused. All right, so I'm done. I will go ahead and show it to you guys. I think it's pretty cool to be honest. So that's the final piece. I know the light in here isn't perfect, so I kind of go over it and show you guys. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see it. But that's it. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, rate, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another one. Take care. Hey, Cody here. Thanks again for watching this video. If you liked it, please consider leaving a comment, a like, or sharing the video with someone else. 
And also, if you did like this video and you want to see more videos in the future, consider subscribing or turning on notifications. Lastly, if you like the painting that you saw in this video or any of the videos you've seen, many of them are for sale and you can see what available paintings um, are available for purchase by visiting my website, CodySchwabi.com. There is a link in the description below. That is all. Thank you again for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys. Bye.